Hi everyone, Mr. Boultry here bringing you video 3.9. We're gonna talk about power, the last topic in the energy unit. So to do so, we're gonna talk about what is power, talk about different types of power, and then give you a bunch of different formulas for how to calculate power based on the information you're given in the problem. So first, what is power? Power is defined as the rate at which work is done. So to give you an example, if I take a book and I raise it from the floor to the top of the table, then I've done a certain amount of work. I change the gravitational potential energy of the book. And if it takes me five seconds to do that, then I can calculate the power based on the amount of work I've done over those five seconds. Now, if I do the same example again, and I raise the book up to the top of the table, thereby changing this gravitational potential energy, I did work on the book, um, but I did it in one second. That's gonna require more power because I did the same amount of work in a much smaller amount of time, thereby requiring more power. Power is measured in watts most commonly, and a watt is just defined as one joule per second. But another way that you've probably heard power is in talking about horsepower. And one watt equals 746 horsepower. And if we imagine horsepower, let's say we're trying to accelerate a car from zero to 60 miles per hour in three seconds. That's gonna require a lot of horsepower. But if instead of doing three seconds, let's say we were fine with uh, going from zero to 60 in 10 seconds, that's gonna require less power because we're still changing the kinetic energy of the car, but we're doing it over a longer period of time. So you can imagine strapping less horses to the front of that car and it would still be able to speed up. It just would take longer to do that speed up. Um, so that is the difference in high power versus low power. So now when we're thinking about types of power, in the same way when we've been talking about work, we need to kind of be very particular about the type of power that we're talking about. So for example, uh, previously we've been talking about the network versus like, I don't know, the work done by gravity or the work done by Mr. Boultry's hand. Um, and so that's associated with the, either the net force, if we're talking about the network, or the, the force of gravity or the force of the hand, if we're talking about the, the work done by an individual force. In the same way, we need to be pretty particular about when we're talking about uh, power, if we're talking about the net power, which is the power uh, sort of overall done by the net force in the network, if we're talking about the power done by the hand or by the engine, um, which is going to be the individual power, which is associated with the individual work, which is attached to the individual force. Also, uh, previously I said that power was the rate of the work. So when I think of another rate, I think of either average velocity or instantaneous velocity. There's two sort of different kinds of rates. And that depends on if we draw the secant line uh, over a time interval or the tangent line uh, at a specific uh, clock reading, a, a specific instant in time. So in the same way, we have average power and instantaneous power. So that's the power over a time interval, let's say zero seconds to five seconds, or the power at three seconds. That is uh, how the energy is changing at three seconds. Um, so now let's just go through a couple of different formulas for how to calculate power. So since we said power is the rate at which work is done, the easiest formula is power equals the work divided by the time. So if there's 10 joules of work and it takes two seconds, the power is going to be 10 divided by two, which is gonna be five watts or joules per second. So that's just basically the easiest way to calculate power. Um, but there's, there's a lot more complicated ways that are based on that same idea. So since work is uh, the dot product of the force and the displacement or force times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement times the displacement, um, this we can just substitute in this work formula for um, the, the power. So it, again, it just depends on what information you're given uh, over the course of the problem. If you're given the force and the displacement and the angle between them and the time, then you can calculate the power. Um, but you'll notice in this circumstance, and that's only going to give you average power because it's over a time interval. So you could find the average power from zero seconds to five seconds. Well, what if you wanted the instantaneous power? You wanted the exact rate at which the energy of the system was changing at three seconds. Well, instead of now drawing a secant line between two clock readings uh, over a time interval, we're going to need the tangent line um, so the, when, whenever I think about tangent lines, you should immediately, immediately, immediately think derivatives. So we're going to take the derivative of the work function, not with respect to displacement, which we've done before to find the gravitational potential energy, but this time to find the, uh, with respect to time. And that gives us the power, the derivative of the work function with respect to time gives us the power, 
or the way that you'll see this on your formula sheet is power equals the derivative of energy with respect to time. And this makes sense because work is just a change in energy. So those sort of things um, go together. So we have a mechanical energy versus time graph and we find the slope of the tangent line and that's going to give us the rate at which that energy is changing, which is the rate at which the work is being done, which is the power. So the slope of the tangent line of an energy versus time graph is the power. Um, so another way that we could look at this, if uh, the power is the derivative of the energy, the derivative of work with respect to time, we could just rewrite that as the derivative of work with respect to time. Um, and work is the force through the displacement. So if, and this isn't always true, but if we're looking at a situation where the force is constant, it's not changing with respect to time, then we can factor out that constant and just say that the power equals the force times the derivative with respect to time of the displacement. So hopefully you remember from unit one that the derivative of displacement with respect to time, you've probably seen this written as X or Y, is the velocity. So another way that we can think about power is the force uh, times the velocity. Or um, and if you don't like this whole uh, cosine of the angle between the force and the velocity, then you can say, um, it is the dot product of the force vector and the velocity vector, which we've talked about in a previous video. So here in the same way, if we're given the average velocity, it's gonna give us the average power. If we're given the instantaneous velocity, it's gonna give us the instantaneous power. So it just depends on if we're talking about the power over a time interval or the power at a time. Um, and so the last idea that I wanted to talk about in this video is if the derivative of work with respect to time is power, then we can find the change in work by integrating power with respect to time. So it just sort of depends on which direction you're given in the problem. Oh, one last thing that I wanted to talk about in this example uh, is, is I've seen something that's really crazy that I've never seen before. So we know that a velocity is the derivative of displacement with respect to time. But also force is we know is mass times acceleration. And acceleration is the second derivative of the displacement function. So this is the only example that I've ever seen so far, we might see more in the future, where you might do mass times the second derivative of the displacement times the first derivative of the displacement. I've never seen you multiply a second derivative times a first derivative. But this is kind of an interesting example where you can do that. Um, and then also don't forget that if you can take the derivative of something, you can take the antiderivative. The, the derivative takes you down a level, the antiderivative takes you up a level. So we can sort of move back and forth between work and power using our derivatives and our antiderivatives. So this is all a lot of hypothetical stuff, and hopefully it'll make more sense in our next class when we start to solve problems involving power. You can sort of get to choose which formula you like to use um, or which you need to use depending on the information given in the problem. But for right now, this is Mr. Boultree wrapping up video 3.9 on power and go bears. <laughs>